Journey News Team, Lynn Bro- You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 5. Coming up at home team weather still warm on this Tuesday afternoon. 66 in Tuscaloosa and down in Montgomery. What about cooler air in the forecast and more showers and storms? Home team weather is coming up. The city of Tuscaloosa is getting millions of dollars. Find out what that money will be used for. And a Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's deputy is receiving national honors. We've got the details on that. I'm Terry Brewer. Lynn Brooks is on assignment tonight. We're glad you're with us. Topping your news tonight, the city of Tuscaloosa is moving one step forward in the recovery process following the April 27th storms. More on that and just how the city is moving forward is in our top story at 5 o'clock. The United States Housing and Urban Development Department awarded the city of Tuscaloosa $16.634 million this afternoon for tornado recovery. Now, according to Mayor Walt Maddox, 80% of the check must be used in tornado affected areas. Maddox says the primary use will go into affordable housing, but it will also be used for infrastructure. And they'll look at matching federal grants for things like safe rooms or hazard mitigation for flooding of the city. Mayor Maddox says it's important the city works to get residents quality housing. And right now, 61% of the homes that were destroyed in Tuscaloosa were rental housing with a median income of less than 28,000. So you're talking about having to build nearly 2,000 homes that are going to give people an opportunity to live in quality housing situations. Maddox says the city is going to stretch the money over the next three to four years. And speaking of storm recovery, people in Alabama are picking up the pieces today after tornadoes ripped the, through the state on Monday. The National Weather Service says a supercell that spawned two tornadoes produced an EF3 tornado with an estimated wind speed of 150 miles per hour. At least two people were killed in the Birmingham area. Another 100 people were hurt. Officials say they're fortunate the storms didn't claim more lives. Well, we certainly hope that we don't have an increase in our fatalities. Our first responders did a great job yesterday of going out and trying to locate everyone. And so we really feel that those numbers are, are pretty accurate. And, you know, certainly two is too many, but uh, just thankfully this morning we're not facing what we were facing last spring. Governor Robert Bentley toured storm damaged areas and discussed recovery efforts today. Bentley also declared a state of emergency for all of Alabama's 67 counties. The National Weather Service forecasters say they found evidence of two tornadoes in Tuscaloosa County, an EF3 and an EF2. Officials estimate peak winds for the EF2 at around 115 miles per hour, for the EF3, 140 miles per hour. They estimate the path was almost a half mile long and 400 yards wide at its widest point. Tonight, President Obama will deliver his last State of the Union address before he is up for re-election. It comes right in the middle of a heated battle for the Republican no presidential nomination. Reporter Greg Black looks, takes a look at what you can expect. President Obama takes the spotlight tonight when he delivers his annual State of the Union address. It's a chance to steal some thunder from the Republican White House hopefuls and to make an impact on Congress and the nation. He knows what he's about and he knows how he wants to uh, present this picture of the state of our union and, and his vision going forward. The focus of his address will be on the economy and job creation. The White House gave a hint of what to expect in a video released over the weekend. We can go in two directions. One is towards less opportunity and less fairness, or we can fight for where I think we need to go. Building an economy that works for everyone, not just a wealthy few. On Tuesday night, I'm gonna talk about how we'll get there. Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels will deliver the Republican response to the president's address, and Herman Cain will give the Tea Party response. House Speaker John Boehner has already given his critique. And it sounds to me like the same old policies will be seen. More spending, uh, higher taxes, more regulations. Uh, the same policies that haven't helped our economy, they've made it worse. And if that's what the president's going to talk about Tuesday night, I think it's pathetic. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords will attend the address before she steps down. The Arizona Democrat is resigning this week to recover from a brain injury she suffered when she was shot last year. I'm Greg Black reporting.
This will be President Obama's third State of the Union address. The White House says it won't focus just on the economy. A Democratic source says he'll also address clean energy and housing. Well, after April's devastating storms, many rushed to the aid to help others, including Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office Chaplain Terry Holman. Today, Sheriff Ted Sexton announced Holman is the recipient of the 2011 National Sheriff's Office Chaplain of the Year for his efforts immediately and in the coming days after the April 27th tornado. Holman organized an information center for lost family members, fed those in need in the whole area, and prayed with victims. Holman says he was surprised just to be nominated. This award, it really is a surprise that I would even be nominated for this because I'm sure there's chaplains all over the United States that deserve this award a whole lot more than I do. Nearly nine months after the tornadoes, Chaplain Holman still conducts post-stress debriefings and counseling sessions for Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's deputies and survivors of the April storms. Well, humor may not be the first way you might think about raising awareness for autism, but one West Alabama family is doing just that. Rick and Suzanne Dowling's son, Sam, was diagnosed with autism 18 years ago. Sam is now 20, and the Dowlings are using a sitcom format as a way to tell Sam's stories and raise awareness for autism. Through the University of Alabama's Faculty in Residence program, Suzanne Dowling says humor helps people understand and relate to them, and she hopes it will help others understand their family is just like everyone else's. People with autism and families with autism do have joy and laughter and do some pretty normal things in abnormal ways, but we, we, we do a lot of things that all the other families does, and I think we want to take that misconception away. The Dowlings are holding the comedy lecture Wednesday night, that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. in Morgan Auditorium on the University of Alabama campus.